I'm excited to have with me today as my guest, Charles Andrew Payne. Charles is an accomplished actor, comedian, writer, motivational speaker, and fitness enthusiast. And he's here today to talk about his latest role in Left Behind, Rise at the Antichrist, and how does he maintain his healthy lifestyle? Welcome, Charles. You know, you, you, thank you very much. Really appreciate you having me. You know, I'm always, when people start doing, doing an introduction to me, I'm like, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, con congratulations on your latest role as Pastor Bruce Barnes. What attracted you to the role? I love that you asked that question. What attracted me to the role? Um, you know, sometimes you get a script and immediately you 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 go, I can step into this. He is, and for me in the storytelling, it's about the humanity and the human connection. And this guy is going through crisis of spirituality, a crisis of humanity, you know, and so for me, the, the breakdown for me is, okay, what does he have that's happening to him that I can relate to, or I can imagine the relation to, and it was, you, if you woke up in the morning, and your wife and your child is gone, how would that make you feel? I have a wife and two kids, how would that make me feel? And the emotionality that came with that, I was like, yeah, well, I'd be devastated. I'd probably spiral out like he did. And then, so I was like, yeah, I can, I can totally understand this. I could absolutely embrace this. And it'd be a joy to bring him to life. So. <laughs> yes. I mean, the film, the movie is gripping. It's, it's, it really makes you think about how you are, how you relate to other humans and mm -hmm. Questions your spirituality, your, your, you know, trusting in God. Um, but was it like I know you played a reverend, right, in Miracle yes. in in East Texas? Yes. So from that, as playing a reverend, was it an easy like? Was it a transferable skill like to get as a pastor? <laughs> um, you would think it would be, but it's not. They're completely different characters in the sense, well, you know, Miracle in East Texas, another film directed by Kevin Sorbo, um, is a period piece. Times are different in the 1930s. And Reverend Reese is the figurehead and the center of his community, the place where people go to for not just spiritual guidance, but just guidance in general, right? Um, that's about as far as the two characters have in common, because as a pastor, you're also a, a, a spiritual guidance for, for people. But where Pastor Barnes did not 100% believe the words that he was preaching on a, on a re Reverend Reese is a dyed in a wool true believer. <laughs> so, you know, and also, you know, Reverend Reese was a old school evangel evangelist like there were some scenes in there where I got to be at the pulpit and preach like an old school evan evangelical preacher oh my god that was fun <laughs> right and yeah. pastor 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 Barnes modern day you know for him it's kind of a job he he's not a full true believer until this crisis happens and then all the things that he's been half-heartedly presenting becomes very real to him and he has to go through this arc of what do i believe what's my relationship with god how do i grow from this and that's the beauty of the character is the arc that he goes through as you know as a, as a human being trying to you know reconnect with your spirituality reconnect and, and oh all this stuff is real in his reality so yeah that you know again that's why we tell stories yes no <laughs> and i mean you've worked with kevin Sorbo twice so three times twice <laughs> so yeah so i mean it's wonderful tell us about what's it like well i've worked with him three times so when he was on uh, the tv series andromeda i did a guest star on there as a character named Daniluk, who was a space bounty hunter, and what fun to get to be, you know, in space in an alternate reality. That's kind of cool. And then years later, um, you know, Miracle in East Texas came along, and I you know, got an opportunity to do that. And then 
shortly after that, you know, here comes Left Behind. And I got, you know, to work with him and his wife again and his son. And you know what? Kevin is a, at least to me, I know there's the public persona and blah, 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 but he has been civil. He's been kind. He's very generous as a, as a director, generous as an actor. And he trusted me to bring the character to life in my interpretation. He'd say, and he'd say, so in this scene, what are you thinking? What's he, what's he doing? What's he feeling? And that's what you want on a set, right? Is the repartee to be able to go, we are two creative individuals taking words off a page, bringing it to life, right? <laughs> so. Yes, and you know, the thing too is like, um, was there like a favorite part in the film? Like, did you enjoy most? I see you're lying in the church down on the, Mm -hmm. and I call it I would call it and then you're is there like you know a favorite scene um here's the thing with left behind uh, which is in theaters today <laughs> um that it was the the most difficult part of that because sometimes as an actor the fact that I'm also I'm a comedian I like to add it um but with left behind because a lot of my dialogue is scripture based I had to be word perfect. Yes. And it's a lot of dialogue to churn through and memorize. And you have no leeway to add a little, you know, tweak to a word here because it flows out of your mouth different that way. Those are things that actors do. No, no, it had to be word perfect. But there were times that it wasn't scripture that I ad libbed some stuff or, you know, and there, I won't give it away in the scene, but there are some scenes in there where Kevin just let me run. And that's when it was the most fun because it's like, oh, camera's still rolling. There's a crowd. He's up here preaching. We've run out of dialogue, but the camera's still, let's just make some stuff up, Charles. And Kevin's like, just go ahead. <laughs> yes. I mean, as a, you know, accomplished comedian, I mean, I mean, it's just what you bring to, as an actor, it is transferable, right? I mean, oh, it's just. 100%. 100%. I'll tell you a quick story. What the, the, the most fun I've ever had when, I, when a director has allowed me to do that, it was a number of years ago. I did a two episode arc on a show called The L Word. And the director let me ad lib this scene. And take after take after take, I would just make stuff up. I keep it within the same realm, beginning, middle, and end, but I would, I was just riffing and she. She goes, okay, we have to stop. My sides hurt. I'm laughing so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, Charles, like, what do you want um, people to take away from the film? What I want is go to see the film, whether, you, you know, it's, it's, it's a faith-based film. So a lot of people go, oh, you know, that's not for me. It's more about the story. And what's really cool that the writers did is they, they, they've taken stuff out of the headlines and put it into the story. So there's reference to COVID, there's reference to cryptocurrency, there's reference to all of those things. So even if you're not you know, in, involved in the faith, you kind of go, oh, that resonated. I saw something about that. I saw something similar on the news, I, right? What I want them to take away is we need to get back to civility. We need to get back to being nice to each other. We need to get back to that there's still hope, there's still redemption, there's still, those are all true human connection things throughout the film that make it, you know, yes, there's adversity, yes, there's conflict that's necessary in storytelling. But if you walk away from this and go, you know what? whether I believe in the rapture or any of those things, but still I recognize that these are some common things that are happening in our world today. And maybe we can change it if we just go back to the basics of be kind, don't do any harm, right? Start there and then go from there because that's, that's what I want you to take away. Yes, there's still hope, even if the world seems wrong and the, the, what we're being inundated with the news and the social media and the dis divisiveness and all that. If you toss all of that out, we go back to the basics of being kind to each other and respectful to each other because we share space on the planet, 
think how much further along we would be. That's what I want. <laughs> so. Yes, yes. I mean, was there a funny moment or like, let's go back behind the scenes. Like, tell us about, was there like a funny moment that you had and it's not in the film, maybe? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Christine, when I show up on a movie set, People always ask me, you know, why you have got to, you always seem so happy every day. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, I'm a Canadian actor that's working. I'm a Canadian actor on a movie. Are you kidding me? Good morning. <laughs> right? That's who I am. And I like to have fun with the, with the cast and with the crew. And sometimes, you know, when you're filming, it can be long days, you know, 10, 12 hour days. So sometimes when I'm on set just for fun, especially if we've been going for a while and you can tell that the energy around the room, I do this silly thing and now I'm going to give it away to people. I start singing, you know, this is the scene that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. Some people started filming it, not knowing what it was. And we'll continue you filming it forever just because and then of course the crew will sometimes start in on it and then everybody's singing we're all laughing and you know oh, levity's wonderful. been brought back <laughs> that's, wonderful. that's wonderful you know it's so important to work well as a team to yeah. you know because everyone's doing you know playing their characters and, and you know making the film you know the best they can and, and it's released mm -hmm. today right Yes, at least today in theaters in Calgary, on uh, fifteen hundred theaters between Canada and the U.S. And if you go to the leftbehind.com website and pick on tickets, then you can put in your postal code, and it'll tell you if there's a theater it's playing in close to where you live. So oh, wonderful! And Charles, I want to talk about your running. Yes, and you're a cook too. So tell us. <laughs> okay, so I have to go back in time to tell you my running story. So in high school, post-secondary, I ran track and field. I'm a sprinter by nature. So that's, you know, I've always been an athlete, been a sprinter. Then, you know, you get out of school and you're no longer in organized sports, so you no longer work out. So I started, you know, and I decided that I wanted to, I wanted to run the marathon. I wanted to run the Vancouver Marathon. So I joined up with the with the running room and joined a running club and we trained for it. And, and the first day I went running out with the group, I remember the, the coach looked at me and says, Charles, where are you going? I said, what do you mean? He goes, you know, it's a marathon, right? Why are you going so fast? <laughs> That's not sustainable. They were going at such a slow pace and I'm a sprinter, so I'm used to running. And he says, no, I had to relearn how to run. And I joined a group, you know, from, from it's called, you know, from couch to, to, to marathon. So basically, you know, you run for a few minutes, walk for a few minutes. And I thought, oh my God, this is so boring. <laughs> 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 and wow. And even when we were running, the pacing was so slow, but I learned, I had to relearn and rewire my brain to pace yourself out and taking breaks. I did not know. I thought, you know, you, it, it signified you were in poor shape. If you just couldn't go, you know, we're doing, we're doing a 5k run, you run the whole 5k. And they're like, no, no, no. We run for 10 minutes and we walk and then we, we slowly build it up. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know this. So anyhow, we did do this. I, I didn't, you know, complete the train and ran the marathon. I was feeling pretty good. Now here's here's my fitness. It's a funny story for you. I'm walking down this at this time. I'm still living in Vancouver. I'm walking down Robson Street, one of the main thoroughfares, and this dude walks by me, and I just kept going. And he says, "Charles, you're just gonna ignore me like that?" And I said, "Do I know you?" And he says, "It's me, Dale." And I'm like. No, because Dale that I knew was probably close to 250 pounds. This kid, this guy probably looked like he was 160, 170. I did not recognize my friend who I had seen. He's a fellow actor. I hadn't seen him in a while. I said, dude, what are you doing? Like, where did half of you go? And he goes, I've taken up this uh, hot yoga. Matter of fact, he says, I'm, I love it so much that I'm actually taking the, the teacher training course. You should come try it out. And I figured, so here's the funny part. I just finished running a marathon. How hard can this yoga thing be? So I 
he convinced me to come, you know, take a hot yoga class. I kid you not. First 10 minutes into the class, I'm flat on my back, breathing heavy, going, what did I just say? <laughs> yeah, it, it kicked my butt, but I loved it. And I still practice it now. And I still run. Um, I'm married to a marathon runner. And I said to her, I said, I said Christine's going to talk to me about running. She should talk to you. Um, I ran, I've run one marathon, a whole bunch of halves. My, my wife is the marathon runner. I think she's done four or five and she's done a bunch of halves and she has a dedicated running group here in Calgary that she goes running with. And they run even when it's minus 29, minus 30 outside. Mm -mm. My threshold is minus 10. We stop there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can run inside, right? If you have a treadmill over the gym. Oh, yeah. Have to... a treadmill inside, go to the gym, but they'll go outside and run in minus 30 weather. And she's an inspiration for me because in Sunday mornings, they do their long runs. And sometimes I go with them sometimes, but when it's really cold, I'm like, no, you guys go ahead. I'm going to go inside. And she's like, you're a wimp. And I'm like, no. I'm a is, West Indian. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, running, it really is. It's, it's so many benefits. It helps. Like, would you say it helps with your, your lines and, and your act as a comedian? And Well, you, you just, you just launch right into my, my secret sauce. I'm a kinetic learner. So when I have to memorize lines, I go for a walk or I go for a run and I repeat it and repeat it in my head. When I have to prep for a, a corporate show or a comedy show I rehearse while I'm running I literally will rehearse the whole show while I'm running the other reason I run is I say Christine um, I live with depression I don't suffer from it and physical activity is how I deal with it so mm -hmm. I do something physical every day whether it's go for a run or go to the gym every day without fail because that's how I deal with depression yeah, so it's wonderful, Charles. Like, what tips would you give to someone who is thinking about, you know, starting to run or or walk or because you know, as I said, there's many benefits, right? Mm -hmm. Start. <laughs> when <laughs> start. I start, start. That's that's the tip. We can give ourselves so many reasons not to. Well, I'm not in really good shape. You know what? We all have to start somewhere. And when I, you know, what like I said, I was, I was an athlete throughout high school and, 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 and for most of my life. And then, you know, I stopped doing organized sports. And then when I decided to start running again, I didn't just go out and start running. I started walking and walking to the point where it's like, oh, this is too slow. Well, let's run for a bit. And then, and then after doing that for a little bit, I'm like, you know what, let's set yourself a goal. I, I've always, you know, been challenged by the marathon. I wonder if I could run a marathon. That's a big goal. Actually, I probably should have started with a five and a 10K, but I was already running that on my own. So let's say, <laughs> let's go and do that. And then, so my advice is start, walk before you run, mm -hmm. right? If you can get a support network, join a group. There are lots of running groups and there's different levels that you can join. You make some new friends, you broaden your social circle, but there's a motivational piece of that is that, you know, when the group is going out running on a Sunday, you don't want to disappoint them by not showing up. Yeah. So that motivation, right? Yes, because they're waiting for you, right? You're accountable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're, you're yeah. accountable. Show up. Exactly. And, and runners, you're a runner, so you'll appreciate this. Runners wave to each other when we see each other. Yes. You know, it makes me laugh. You know what I say? I say was we wave to each other when we go by. You know what we're saying? You're just crazy as I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels good. It, it just, you know, as you, as a creative person, it helps, as you were saying. And also, too, with long days on set, mm -hmm. it also gives you that stamina. Right, that yes. you can be physically, mentally fit. It's so many benefits. That's... Well, yeah. The other thing too, Christine, is here's here's the little motivational, I'll call it slight lie and exaggeration that I use for myself outside of you know, I run and I exercise and I stay fit to to you know 
help me manage depression. But the other thing too is I say, because of, because of what I do for a living, it's a running joke. I say, I'm off to the gym. And you know why? Because I get paid to look like I look. So I have to go and stay. <laughs> Oh, I know. It's, it's my instrument. And yeah. so I have to keep my instrument in shape. So oh, no. that's, that's my, that's my quote unquote BS motivational work for myself. Dude, you got to, even when I don't feel like doing it, it's like, no, no, you got to go do it because you pay to look like you look. Go. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you, you look fit, Charles. I, mean, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And thank you. You love cooking too. Yes. Your favorite dish or no, I, I I was raised in a household by my by my first formative years, I was raised by my grandparents in the Caribbean. And my grandmother believed in this and, and I think it's true. She said, you know, I'm not gonna raise you to be a burden on a woman. So all the men in our in my family learned how to cook clean, so all of that. So that's my, my start of cooking. And when I moved to Canada, I just kind of continued it. And it's, again, it's an outlet for creativity for me, right? I cook because I love to create and make stuff up. And, you know, and then, so here's my funny story about cooking. I was a single man in my thirties and I thought, sign up and take a couple of cooking classes because I bet you be, you'll meet some wonderful ladies in the cooking class. And so I signed up for the first class and uh, me and the 20 other guys that signed up for the class mother had the same ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and in my house, I do all the cooking. And when I'm on the road or traveling, it was, it's so funny. My wife says, you know, so the boys are a little worried that you're going to be out of town. And I said, he goes, they already come say, what are we going to eat when dad's gone? Or they've come to me and say, can you cook some stuff and put it in the freezer in the fridge? Because <laughs> what are we going to do for meals when you're not here? <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. But Charles, do you have a favorite dish? Um, do I have a favorite dish? It's going to sound pretentious, but I like to make venison bourguignon. And the reason being my, my father-in-law is a hunter. And so my freezer is usually well stocked with all kinds of venison and it's trying to find creative things to do with it. And, you know, I used to make beef, you know, and I switched to venison. And it's just, you know, whenever I make that, everybody's like, oh, this is, and here's the rule for, for a dinner table with me because I love to cook. And I, I, when I'm home, I, you know, to put some meals together. If you don't like it, say nothing. And if you like it, say, we can make, you can make this again. Then it'll end up in the rotation. So my kids will come, you know, and my, my older um, son <laughs> will sometimes sit at the table and he'll go, oh, this is actually good. I'm like, dude, punctuation is everything. What you just said there came across as I was, I didn't have high expectations, but I'm surprised. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, it's just wonderful. Like I, I, you know, I just so lovely interviewing you or, you know, having this interview. And is there anything else you'd like to add, Charles? In terms of which? No, you know what? Um, two things. Uh, go see the film if you can support it. If you're, if you are in the entertainment industry in Canada, or you're watching this and you're outside of Canada, think about Alberta when you wanna make a film and you hear about Alberta and you hear about how we have fantastic locations and fantastic crew, et cetera, but they don't always talk about the talent. And I'm so happy because I'm, I'm from Vancouver originally, that's where I started my career. And then I moved to, to Calgary in 2006. I'm so happy with and impressed with the caliber of talent and the number of creative people that I've added to my circle and who have embraced me. And they want to, and they're talented. They want to create, they want to you know, promote and produce and direct. And we don't want to necessarily wait for Hollywood to come calling. 
And I, I love that. And so I'm happy to be an ambassador for Alberta Film because this is a great place and there's so much great stuff going on here. And Hollywood, if you're listening, we here waiting, come on down, <laughs> right? Because so, yeah, that's all I want to add, so. That's great, Charles. And if people want to follow you, where can they go? Instagram, um, maybe. <laughs> yes, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Um, Instagram is just Charles Andrew Payne. I would recommend that be the best place to go. My my social media coordinator, my teenage son, keeps telling me I'm on the wrong platform because I'm on Facebook. And he's like, Dad, Grandpa's on Facebook. That's not the place for you. But I still have a Facebook. So I do post on all three, but Instagram is becoming the... I do also have a TikTok, but I'm not very active on there because I don't understand it. But Instagram, follow me on Instagram, Charles Andrew Payne. You'll find me. And hey, um, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Charles. And I love for you to come back. Anytime, anytime. You let me know. I appreciate it. <laughs>